In this example, we're going to show you how to create the toolpath for the rocket nameplate sign that you can see here. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go and open an existing file. So from the rocket nameplate project folder, we're going to open the rocket nameplate drawing file. And so these are the vectors that we created in the previous drawing session to this tutorial. Now in this session we're going to look at various toolpaths and one of those toolpaths is a pocket toolpath where we're going to look at pocketing between this inner border vector here and the rocket text that we've got in the centre here. To make things easy for me to select these vectors I could look at grouping them. So if the rocket text selected I'm going to hold down shift and we're going to select that inner border I'm going to come over to Edit Objects and we're going to use the Group option. And so now we've grouped those, the software sees this as one entity. And so if I just click into the white space to deselect that and then reselect either the border or the text, it's going to select all of those that we grouped. So this just makes it easier for me to select multiple vectors. Okay, we're going to do the same for the drill holes. So we've got four holes in the corner of the sign and I'm going to select that one, shift and select all the other circles and then we're going to group them. This time we're going to look at the keyboard shortcut to group them which is the letter G for group. So press G and you'll see now that they are now a group there. So now we're ready to go over to the toolpaths tab. So to do that let's go to this icon here that will switch over to the toolpaths tab and then it will just hide away the drawing tab on the left hand side. So before we go and create any toolpaths we must check our material setup. So let's use the set icon here. So the material thickness that we're working with is half an inch so we're going to leave that as half an inch in there. XY position, we're going to set that to the lower left hand corner, which is this corner here. Z0, we're going to do that off the material surface, so we're going to leave that selected there. Okay, come down to the bottom, check over the rapid Z gaps and the home start position. Happy with those, we could go ahead and press OK. So the first toolpath we're going to create is the pocket toolpath between this vector and the text vector. So as we've grouped them we can just select that and go over to the pocket toolpath. Okay, So first we need to specify our cut depth. So we're going to start that on top of our material which is at zero and then our cut depth we're actually going to cut down an eighth of an inch here. So we're just going to put in the eighth inch value in there. Then we could choose a tool. So for this we're going to go into the select option to open up the tool database and in this case I'd like to use an 8th inch end mill so I can see I have one there I could run over the settings ensuring that they're safe and appropriate for my machine and then we'll select that and we can see it's updated in the form here you can see it's going to cut that in one pass then we could choose how we clear this pocket whether we do an offset where it follows the shape or we do a raster strategy that will go back and forth. In this case we're going to do the offset strategy and then we could give that a name. We're going to call this one pocket text press calculate and that will automatically open up the preview toolpath form along with the 3D view to actually preview that toolpath. So you can see that toolpath there in our block of wood. If I wanted to change the appearance I could do using this drop down list. However I like the cherry look that we've got there. OK, so then we could preview that toolpath. Now what I'd like to do before I preview that, I'd just like to change the toolpath colour. So use the toolpath colour option and then I'm going to select the dark red. And so everything that gets machined away will be this colour. So we'll just reduce the speed down and we can just preview that toolpath and we can see it creating that pocket there for us. If we wanted to, we could just speed that up and we can see exactly how that part is going to look. So that looks good. Now what I'd like to do now is apply a texture into this pocket. So we could look at using the texture toolpath to create that textured effect. So let's just close this preview down. I'm actually going to tile our windows horizontally. That way I have access to my vectors in the 2D view at the top here and I can still see my preview there at the bottom. So my vectors are still selected from when we created the pocket. So let's go over to the texturing toolpath. OK, 
Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is select our tool. So if we use the select option to open up the tool database, in this case I'd like to use an 8th inch ball nose. Just glance over those settings to ensure they're safe and appropriate for my machine. Go ahead and press OK. Then we need to specify a start depth. Now we know that we've already cut down an eighth of an inch, so I need to ensure that we make the start depth this value. So we'll put an eighth of an inch in there for the start depth. So now we need to specify our texture settings. And this is where we can enter different values for the cut depth, the cut length, how much it overlaps and the step over and this will generate a random texture that we can use within that the areas of our vectors that we've got selected here and so it really is a case of playing around with these values which is something I definitely recommend you do yourself for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to enter values that I've created previously that will give me an interesting effect Okay, so for the maximum cut depth we're going to go with 0, 3 in there and then for the cut length we're going to go with half an inch we're going to go with a 20% overlap in there and then we're going to go the step over of 0 0.05 angle we're just going to leave that at 0 there and then we're going to give this a name and we're going to call this one texture pocket and then simply press calculate and then we could go ahead and preview that toolpath. Okay, so you can see it's creating that there. It's not looking particularly as I wanted it to, so if we just zoom in there, and we can see what's happened is that texture toolpath has actually eaten into our rocket text. And the reason for that is that the center of the tool will machine up to the vectors that we've got selected and therefore the radius of the tool has actually cut into our text. And so to rectify this we can go back into the form and look at applying a boundary offset. So let's just use the undo last option there. And we're just going to open up the texture pocket and towards the bottom of the form we've got this option here boundary vector offset and so what we could do is we could apply an offset in here typically just over half the radius of the tool that we're using so that it just stays away from that vector by that amount okay so in this case as we're using an eighth inch ball nose we're going to apply an offset that's just over half of that radius of the tool which is 0 0.07 then we could go ahead and press calculate there and then we could just simply go ahead and preview that toolpath and so you'll see now it's actually not eating into the text there if I wanted to I could change the toolpath colour to match the pocket so I use the dark red option and if we zoom in we can see the gap between this text and the texture here and that gap is the allowance that we applied in the form there okay so I like the way that that looks so let's just put that in the ISO view and then we could close out of the preview toolpath form so now I'd like to look at drilling each of these holes that we've got in the corner of our sign so to do that I can use the drilling toolpath then we need to select the vectors that we'd like to drill into so I'm going to select one of these circles remember we grouped them earlier on in this session and so when I select one it selects all of them as they're grouped and we need to specify our cut depth. So we're going to start this at zero. We're going to cut all the way through our material. If we've forgotten what we set our material thickness to, we could let the software help us out here by typing Z and then equals, and then that will put in that half inch value for me that we set as our material thickness. Then we need to choose a tool. Okay, so these circles are actually an eighth inch. Uh, diameter so I'm going to use an eighth inch tool in this case you can see that's selected I could use the edit option just to glance over the settings here to ensure that they're appropriate for the machine that I'm using we do have the option here to use peck drilling okay, so this means that it will drill down to a certain depth and then retract up by an amount that you specify just to help with chip clearance now we don't really need to use this in this example so we're just going to leave that unchecked give this a name so we're going to call this one drill holes and I could simply use the option to calculate that so we can see that path there 
go into each of those holes. And then if we wanted to, we could preview that toolpath, just put it in C so we can see those holes there. Okay, so I like the way that, that looks. So now we can just close out of that preview. And the last toolpath we're going to look at is the profile toolpath to actually cut our sign out of our material. So let's select this vector here. We're going to go over to the profile toolpath. So again, we want to specify our cut depth. So start depth is at zero. Cut depth, we want to cut all the way through. So again, Z equals, and it'll put that half inch value in there for me. The tool we're going to use, we use the select option here. We're going to look at using the eighth inch end mill. Again, check over the settings, press OK. Machine vectors, outside, inside, or on those vectors. We want to machine on the outside of that vector that we've got, so we'll use the outside option there. Then we have the option to add tabs to our toolpath. Okay, so I'm going to use this option to hold my sign to my material block. So if I check that option there, you can see we can specify the length and the thickness for our tabs. Okay, I'm happy with what we've got there, so quarter inch length for the tab with a thickness of 0.1. And then we use this option here to edit the tabs. So here we can specify a number of tabs we want to add in there. Four seems reasonable, so I could just use the Add Tabs option. And the software will just automatically put them in. If I didn't like where something was, I could move it. For example, I could move this over to the center here. Uh, I could click on a tab to delete it, and then I could click anywhere on the vector to reinsert a tab. Again, I can move one, delete it, and then we'll just insert one on the left there. Okay, so I'm happy with the tab position that I've got there. Then we could go ahead and press close. We could give that a name. We're going to call this one Profile Cutout. And then we could simply go ahead and press Calculate. So let's maximize the 3D view. We're just going to take a look at how that profile toolpath looks. So if we just zoom in there. So you can see, judging by these passes, that it's creating this in four separate passes there. And you'll notice here where we inserted a tab at the bottom of our sign, our tool is traveling along that path and then as it gets to a tab it retracts, goes across and then it plunges back to the final depth to cut the sign out. And so you'll see we've got a tab here, here, here and here where we inserted them in the profile toolpath. So then we could go ahead and preview that toolpath and if we just twiddle our view, we can see we've got those tabs in place and everywhere else has been cut away. So I like the way that that sign looks. So now we could start to think about saving out these toolpaths. So let's just put that in the ISO view. We're just going to close out of the preview toolpath form. And so to save out a toolpath, simply come over to the Save Toolpath icon. At the moment we have no visible toolpaths to be saved. So we need to make our toolpaths visible in order to save them. So let's simply click on this checkbox here for the pocket text. I can see that's now displayed in our toolpaths to be saved list. And then we need to identify the post processor that we're going to use here from the drop down menu. Search for the appropriate one for your machine and then simply save the toolpath out. And then you could do that for all of the other toolpaths, save them out, and then send them over to your CNC machine to cut the sign out. And so that completes this tutorial on the toolpath setup for the Rocket nameplate. So it'd be a good idea to go ahead and save this file. So let's go to File, Save As, and then in the Project folder, we're just going to call this one Rocket nameplate 2.5D toolpaths. Press save and you can access that from the project folder.